Hello, everyone, and thanks for having me at Match XR. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the venue, um, but here I am, and you're there. So, yeah, I'll be talking about Web AR and um, slightly also about QR codes and how Web AR is sort of reinventing QR codes to be used in a whole new type of way. And first, a brief intro about who I am and what our company does. My company, Flyer Augmented Reality Studio, is a creative augmented reality studio, and we focus on creating highly custom augmented reality experience experiences. And we don't um, we don't create our own technology or develop our own software, but rather we use use some um, other companies tools and platforms to augment reality that best suits our clients needs so we're sort of omni software as here's our small team we're two creative engineers and two engineering creatives and me and Ed are are the engineers and Nico and Sebastian are the 3d artists Nico is full-time and Sebastian is freelancing so we're Pieni, mutta pippurinen, small but powerful team. And here are a few of the tools we use at the moment. Out of these tools, uh, Zapper is the platform we use for web AR development and web AR projects. It's a British British AR platform. They just won, won some Augie Award at Augmented World Expo as well. But we're not married to any of these and we keep keep our eyes open all the time for good new tools and technologies. And now um, video one, please, from from the technical guy. Here's a short clip of what Yeah, that was a one minute clip of of the very different types of realities that we've augmented. Um, and yeah, that's for the short intro of, of what our company does. But um, a question for the crowd. Um, which one of you enjoys downloading apps? Or have you ever met someone who enjoys the process of downloading apps? Because because I sure haven't. Yeah, I guess it's I can't see you over there, but I'm guessing that no hands were raised. And um, Q Web AR, which is a um, cool thing. And basically it's augmented reality uh, that runs on your mobile browser and does not require the user to download one more app because unfortunately, although the app download process is is fast and just a few clicks, it's often that one step too much for for consumers. Um, and Web AR is there are many platforms for Web AR creation and they're all going forward and there are new platforms popping up all the time, but it's not perfect yet and probably never will be perfect, but it's getting there. It's starting to be pretty solid. And um, this is where the QR codes come in. 
a QR code. It's just it's a two dimensional barcode and it technically I think it contains only like um, string. But what you can do with the QR code is that you can take take the basic idea of QR code and have it link to a web AR experience. So instead of having um, having a like unique code that it works only with um, traditional AR app where you had to download an app and scan the app code, now you can just scan a QR code with practically any smartphone's camera and it will take you to the web AR experience. And this one is especially good for image tracked solutions where the augmented reality digital content anchors to a target image. And this is one way of making it work. You can have the QR like direct straight to the web AR URL address, or you can add like optional layer of redirection. Like for example, a demo I'll be showing you soon. It redirects via our website into the web AR URL address. So we have the option of redirecting it to somewhere else if, if we want. And here I'll show you um, two quick examples. Uh, the first one is um, technically elementary augmented reality solution or AR experience. And like technically it's it's only a video and a few buttons and using an app that was cool 10 years ago. Um, but now in, in web AR, it's like the, the coolness is coming back and it's always the content content that matters. And now please technical guy put on the next video. Jokainen syy, joka estää kuntoilun on tekosyy. Postcards can be so much more than just static ink on paper. Saatanan tunarit. And we created this fun set of Kekkonen themed postcards with together with Salmi platform and the cool card graphics and video edits were done by Jere of Oh Wow. Tappa eivät tohdi ja tiineeksi eivät saa. But yeah, as you saw, it was only video content or to be more specific actually four of them that were cropped into a postcard size or aspect ratio and attached to the postcard that was the AR target image. A few buttons on the side changed the video and one of the buttons was a link to a web website and these are very easy and fast to create and I'm still still waiting for big magazines like Helsingin Sanomat to to start start making their print more interactive. Um, and the magic ingredient for the previous example and for actually all augmented reality content is that the content has to be good quality and fun. And if you can make it slightly interactive, it's it's always a good thing. And now, hey, a demo for you to try. Uh, I'm hoping that some of you are in close proximity to wherever these slides are being, so being shown. So maybe you can give this a scan with your device. iPhone scan the QR code right away uh, with the camera. Androids should do it too. And if your basic Android camera doesn't read it, uh, you might have a Google Lens or a QR reader. But if you just hate QR codes, you can type augmented.flyar.fi in your mobile browser and see what happens. And this is an image tracked AR experience. So the content anchors to this specific round image and the primary use case for image tracked 
AR is always a printed product. Like we have these round flyers, which are our sort of our company business cards. And yeah, the QR will redirect you to via our site to the web AR unique URL. Then the browser will ask for permissions to use the camera and then the AR content will anchor onto this. And the first time you scan it, there will be like a welcoming info button, which you have to click open and then the lights will go on and other info buttons will open up. And um, yeah, there's lots of interactivity. You can click on buttons to get more info about our dudes or our innovation area. And um, yeah, there's also a 360 picture, which you can click in the middle of the 3D model is the eye icon, which opens up a 360 render from, from our office. And this content can also be dynamic, like now it's Christmas time. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to do it for this presentation, but uh, Christmas tree and Santa Claus are on their way to our augmented office. And then um, Mr. Technical Guy, can you cue the next video, which will show a short clip of this uh, working. Interactivity is a big thing in augmented reality. Of course, you can have static and animated 3D models, but when the user can interact with the content, that's when the actual magic happens. For example, here you can click on uh, the info button in our innovation area, Let's see what's going on there. Or then you can take a look inside our office to a 360 picture. or you can even close down our office to see what happens at night. I wonder who is winning. It's me. Yeah, good night. Yeah, welcome to our office. I hope at least some of you got the chance to try it yourself. And if you didn't, please um, let me know or contact me and I'll send you the um, target image to try out. And yeah, this particular example we created as um, sort of showcase of what WebAR um, can do and what kind of rich digital media content it can have. And the most um, visual part was of course the cool animated 3D model of our office. Then it also had some audio, a uh, very short video clip, a 360 image, lots of info buttons, which you could click to find out more info, um, text infos, links to our website and um, LinkedIn profiles and a link button to save my contact information as well. And also it had the small night mode Easter egg where our uh, our team was playing Broforce on Nintendo. And yeah, the magic ingredient for for this one is um, the font details, which always make the AR experience pop and more interesting and intriguing. And if uh, someone is wondering uh, how heavy this experience is, it's only around 10, 11 megabytes. So that's a very important thing for WebAR solutions, WebAR experiences that need to download on the, on mobile connections is that the content needs to be optimized uh, lightweight in polygons and megabytes and texture sizes. So, so it loads fast and runs smoothly even on, on a bit older devices. I tried this on an ancient iPhone SE and it works mm, all right. It doesn't work perfect, but it works well enough, so I don't feel bad about it. And that's a major turndown if the content weighs a ton and the user has to wait for it, and then they get some high poly static model, which is laggy. Then it's a major disappointment for the 
user. Um, some upsides of web AR is that the biggest one, of course, is that it works without app downloads. Uh, on most devices, it works without hiccups. There are a bunch of um, surprises that can occur. For example, if the user has has some very strict settings for browsers not to not to be able to use cameras, then they might have to manually alter some setting. And yeah, there's lots of platforms and frameworks for web AR creation. And um, interactive content is possible. Like it's there are many, many, many um, platforms that allow for like a static 3D model to be placed on a planar surface. But uh, I think interactivity and animations make make it much, much more than just a static 3D model. And yeah, support for various different media types is a big thing. So you can mix 3D and audio and 360 pictures and make like a multimedia experience. Um, but yeah, it's not perfect. It has its downsides. At the moment, plane tracking for interactive and animated AR experiences is still a work in progress. I think that eighth wall is the furthest in in this, but I, I know that other others are are very strongly in the race. And then yeah, although QR codes were invented in like ninety-three or ninety-four, um it it still might be a mystery to many. I think it's partly a cultural thing. In some countries QR codes are are um more much more highly recognized than than over here uh, and yeah performance is slightly weaker than in apps and um, yeah the newer your device the better it will work but that that goes for practically any any mobile things and then yeah browsers mm, treat the AR experiences a bit differently. Like some time ago, we had a project which had a 360 picture. And I noticed that in Firefox, the 360 picture was like 180, 180 degrees the wrong way. So it was like upside down thing, which was strange. Otherwise, it worked the same. But yeah, bro, bro, the most common browsers like Chrome and Safari work work best some more marginal browsers like Brave might be a little wonky, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that this will, will be standardized soon-ish. And yeah, there's a million use cases for web AR things. Um, and at the moment, I feel that image tracked web AR is um, the most reliable type of web-based augmented reality. So making your print printed material more than a static ink on paper is the is the like most widest use case. Uh, we we can create like interactive product presentations. We just did one uh, earlier this year for block solutions. And then yeah sim very, very simple use case would be to add video content to printed news. For example, last night there was the football game. Uh, it would be cool cool to see on the sports pages you could see like the goals, for example. It would have been cooler to see the goals if Finland made some of them, but anyway. Uh, then the AR content can be changed over time. So for example, for uh, music festivals, the festival posters could have like featured artists every week or every day even. And a uh, big thing would be for education, augmenting school books with, let's say, 3D molecules or the, um, 
a water cycle or whatever can be can be created as content and we can also fetch real-time data there's a few few ways to do that too like get real-time data from a server and maybe visualize it as 3d interactive ar infographics and yeah basically anything anything is possible the sky is the limit and i feel that the best ideas and best use cases are still waiting to be found and that's about it this was well timed 20 minutes ish <laughs>